Well, hello! It's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I look at the fountain pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. So, let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And, can you guess what tomorrow's video is going to be? Let's see if you can figure it out from the clues littered throughout this video. Uh, please leave a comment if you've got an idea. And I've, as always, I've got a couple other topics I'll be bringing up, like sparkly ink and so on. So, let's take a look at the pen. So, from left... Do that when you're not rolling on the chair. <laughs> From left to right, I have a Lamy Dialogue 3, Aurora 88, Vintage Edition, of course, a Pilot Vanishing Point, Ballograph, I think 64, but I'm not sure, a Wingsung 699, a Pilot Custom 823, Platinum 3776 with the Shengyo finish, uh, Pilot Fermo, which apparently is discontinued. I did not know that. Uh, Pilot Justice 95 and a Central Pen 100820. And uh, just as an update, I used these. I think I showed you last week that uh, my cartridge had gotten stuck in here and it pulled the pin out of the pen and everything. So uh, what I had to do, it took a little digging. I, I kind of used the paper clip to pull the pin out a bit. And then I was able to grab it with the needle nose pliers. And if you're not familiar with that whole saga, you know, on a Schaefer, although this is a Escritor pen, but it uses Schaefer cartridges. In fact, here's a, oops, here's an original cartridge to the Escritor. Uh, they have a, this very small opening that's used, that goes over the pin. And uh, yeah, I, oh, that's gross. <laughs> I'm having a bugger of a time getting that ink to dissolve, but it seemed to want to come bubbling out while I held it there. Gross. But anyway, uh, the Schaefer fits, but the pen had been pulled out of the pen, so I had to do some surgery to get it back. Um, I'll confess I just did it, so the pen's not really writing yet. Let's see how successful I was. Oh, please stay. Shh. Well... Okay, progress, the pin stayed, the cartridge came out. Doggone it. Okay. Well, okay, I'll fix it later. This is going to be more work to grab, but I'll fix it later. But I'll br I'm bringing this up now because I don't want to forget, one of my viewers, who will be getting a nice thank you letter and so on, sent me something to help out with that pen. Something I didn't even know existed. So that was exciting. So she sent me a nice slim vintage converter, which would be handy. By the way, I have a Schaefer Legacy 2 where the rubber seems to have stopped working, so I need to replace it. So I got to research on the internet how to replace the sack inside of a Schaefer converter. Uh, but just to give you a little perspective here, the regular Schaefer converter is a lot bigger around. Now the other thing that she sent me are these slim cartridges. Which will need some rehydrating of course, but again You know, same kind of narrow opening, but slim. So it'll be interesting to see if it fits. I'm hoping it will. Uh, judging by the performance I just got with that flipping pen. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to swear there. Um, I I'm, I'm, think I'm ready to jump to the slim cartridges. Grrr! As always, I'll be doing my writing samples in my BOMO art journal, which is getting towards empty. Or full. Pens get empty, notebooks get full. 
one thing I've been doing very badly the last few weeks has been uh, getting this show out on time. I will just say we are in our last week of school. Graduation is the 24th. I'll probably talk a little bit about that at the end of the video. And so I'll have time because I was thinking about it. How many videos, thanks to this virus, I am making every week. That's why I'm not getting pen videos made. Uh, I know it's a matter of willpower and such, but doggone, I am just sick of being in front of a camera and editing videos. I, I'm a teacher, not a video producer. All right, so anyway, my first pen is a Lamy Dialogue 3. In fact, you're going to see several retractable pens this w in this episode because uh, I filmed two videos. Now, I don't want to tell you what pen I bought, but right before the virus took off i ordered three pens from a retailer a good retailer uh, but they've been massively delayed actually i guess two from the one retailer the other one from a different retailer but anyway massively delayed but one of those three pens just arrived this week so yeah mid-march to uh what is it mid eight no mid-may only two months late so i won't show you the pen or tell you what it is because I want there to be a surprise tomorrow. I'll just show you the box. So my first impression will be this mystery pen that's inside this box. You'll have to guess what that pen is. So the Lamy Dialogue 3 will star in Wednesday's video where I compare the different retractable pens. And so it's retractable. You know, nice turning mechanism. And I'm going to be optimistic and write this date because I think next week I can get back on target. Alright, so Lamy Dialogue 3. And if you see my other videos this week, suddenly I'm writing neatly, but in those I was struggling. I don't know why. Hiroshizuku Konpeki, which is a nice blue ink, and it actually has a little bit of a reddish sheen. Uh, probably you will not see it on this paper. We'll try, but probably won't see it on this paper. This paper is just a little bit too absorbent. But it's a very nice color of blue. Uh, and I appreciate that Hiroshizuku has come out with these smaller bottles uh, because I've got too much ink and uh, I don't need a giant bottle of this for how often I use it. My next pen is a Aurora 88, the vintage version. Mostly out it was going to be i did a video earlier collaboration earlier this week with uh pierre gustafson of the world famous pierre gustafson test and this was going to be one of my pens in that video but at the last minute i changed my mind but it was already inked up so here we go uh, the ink in it is a califolio ink i want to say by call but suddenly i am drawing a complete blank Luckily, I've got my list right here, and I'm right. It is by call. Uh, we, I've talked a little about knockoff pens before. This is a pen that came out in response to the Parker 51. My opinion is it's superior to the Parker 51. I would much rather write with this pen than a Parker 51 any day. It's, it's just comfortable. It's stylish and I love how it writes. <laughs> That's why you see this pen in my pens and use quite often, but you never see the Parker 51, except once in a while we're like, okay, I guess I should write with it. Uh, then I have a Pilot Vanishing Point, which is one of those clicky pens, so you can sit and do that during your meetings, or while taking a test and bother everybody around you. Uh, this one has a steel nib. Uh, 
mostly in the United States you can only find the gold nibs, but somehow I managed to get one with a steel nib. Roshizuku Yu Yaki. Which must mean something orange. The thing I don't like with the vanishing point is the clip is like right in the way. My grip is holding it and it's just like, and they, you know, they even have little gouges here for your fingers, so maybe I'm supposed to hold it right here. I don't know, I just never found the vanishing point very comfortable and, you know, the writing is, eh, it's okay, but it's not special. So really the only thing this pen has to offer is that it's retractable. I've seen a couple nice finishes. They had one a few years ago. It was kind of a graduated red and orange theme, kind of like a sunset. I like the looks of it, but didn't really want the pen. I have my Bolograph, the a Swedish pen. The reason I'm thinking 64, I don't remember now. I must have had it in my notes somewhere. I'll write 64. If it's wrong, it's wrong. I write, I do wrong stuff on here all the time, and nobody's stopped me yet. All right, Krishna. You know, I'm not one of those channels that's offering fake news about uh, coronavirus or something. So I think I'm pretty safe if I do fake news about fountain pens once in a while. By the way, I did have a comment from a viewer who was concerned about, you know, what if YouTube takes your videos down? What would, you know, do you have a backup plan? And I did think about that. I'm not ready to share it yet. But yes, I do have a backup now. So that viewer can rest easy knowing that there is now a plan. And I'm working on, you know, my older videos that aren't saved on Dropbox, because they are all on Dropbox. Once I started using Dropbox, uh, before that I would just, you know, erase the video after I'd uploaded it to YouTube, but now I can have it on Dropbox, but not on my computer. Uh, but they, I am working on another platform. Okay, this is a Wingsung 699. I got myself in some trouble on this channel a few weeks ago for even daring to talk about this pen. Um, I love this ink in it though. The you know the pen itself is yeah. I need to do a video where I compare it to the uh, eight twenty three. And this is the fine nib. The ink is a Krishna monsoon sky. And I was just reading about monsoon damage somewhere. It's not coming to me right now where it was, but, you know, one of those countries that gets monsoons. Here in the U.S. we get hurricanes. Well, we must get some monsoons. I don't know if they get many monsoons in California. You know, it's not quite the right setting like it is for uh, hurricanes. But anyway... I like the color. <laughs> North Dakota, we get blizzards, and they don't name uh, an ink blizzard because, you know, you wouldn't be able to say it because blizzards are snow. All right, this is my Pilot Custom 823. This is a fun pen to write with. Very high quality make. Um, good one for just daily writing. Uh, the ink here is Rohrer and Klingner Aubergine. And pretty quick here. I'm going to be hopefully planting a few aubergines outdoors. Because uh, well, I mowed my lawn for the first time on Friday the 15th. Uh, that snow we had the weekend before definitely seems to have encouraged it once it melted. 
and uh, I think I'm going to be mowing again here pretty soon. And I don't like to mow more than once a week, and preferably less than that. And I like my lawn long. I don't like it short. I like it long so it hides all the sins. <laughs> and uh, so my mower's set like at three inches, three and a half, something like that. And uh, I don't know why I'm giving you all this information. <laughs> Who cares about my lawn? Okay. Uh, this is Omos Gray, but the garden will be fun. Um, so expect some gardening videos soon. So this is, uh, sorry, Platinum 3776. And it has the coarse nib, which is what Platinum calls their double broad. And the ink in it is Omos Gray, which is a discontinued color. Well, the whole brand is discontinued. Sad to say. I'm told that uh, is it Scripto has kind of taken that mantle. I don't know if Scripto's a new company or what. I, it's, it's a part of the pen market I don't follow real closely because I'm more usually more into vintage pens. But, you know, I like a, my little catchphrase, fountain pens at all price points, both new and old. I do buy new pens. Uh, <laughs> But I will say this gray is very green. I don't know if there was something in the pen or if it's always been like that. I'll have to look through my pens in use and figure that out. This is a Pilot Fermo. Speaking of discontinued, uh, this model is discontinued. Um, you know, the refill is interchangeable with a vanishing point. Uh, same problem as with the vanishing point. You know, it's the same clip design, but it's just uh, just not a comfortable pen to hold. That clip is in the way. Uh, the Lamy Dialog has some subtle tricks that and you can watch my original review. They help pull that clip out of the way. It's still annoying, but not not like it is on the vanishing point. I think part of the reason the Fermo doesn't last is this is almost 360 degrees of turning. Uh, that's not that instant deployment. Now, to be fair, I'd probably just do this with my other hand, but you know, there's something to be said for just going click, click. We have a Pilot Justice 95. I think I did that one last week, too. I think last week I did the name of the pen with soft and the ink and hard. So we'll do it the opposite way today. So we have a Pilot Justice. Oops, I forgot already. <laughs> oh, well, we'll have 95. Uh, fine. And the ink in it, we'll turn it to hard. Is Sailor Gentle Grenade. Did that make a difference to the writing? Not as far as I can see, but I can feel the difference. I always liked it on hard when I do math or science with it, and then soft for everything else. And finally, my pride and joy of my collection, my central pen, 10820. Uh, this has a Califolio ink in it. 
Palafolio Inca Sol. It's not so much that the writing is spectacular with this pen, it's the feel. Uh, this nib feels a lot like a paintbrush. It requires a very light touch on the page. This is not a pen you can you want to get rough with. Not a pen I'll ever let you use. Sorry. So those are the pens and inks that I've been using this week. I just want to bring up another topic. I've got uh, graduation coming um, on the 24th, like I said. We're graduating 26 seniors. Now, uh, any kid that gives me a graduation announcement, I'll give them a personal letter and uh, a link to the photographs of them that I've collected over the years. So I always like to use sparkly inks. I have a Noodler's Conrad that has a nice... Uh, Goulet nib in it. So I haven't quite decided which one, but I just wanted to show you the sparkly. This is Girbon, I forget what it is, Blue Ocean or something, but there's all the sparkles. Uh, so you want to freak people out, put the sparkly inks in like a Platinum President or you know, a really nice pen. They don't like seeing that. But you have to shake your inks up. And one of the things I don't like is when you're uh, using them in your fountain pen you have the same problem they settle out and they get into the feed and then you clean the pen and it's still in the feed and eh, it's a pain in the ass uh, the another one I'm considering I had bad luck with it the first time I tried it but uh, I think my problem was uh, where is the nib is it over here still? yeah I tried it with a, a new nib that I'd never used before and that was a mistake so I need to try out the nib and the ink again. But Dea Trementis. And the same thing, it's got sparklies. But you gotta shake it up. Shake some more. This actually has a lot of sparklies in it. This is a very uh, sparkly ink. Um, you know, I've, I've heard people tell me that the sparklies can cause you to wear out your nib. And I've heard other people say, ah, don't worry about it, just do your own thing. So I don't know what the answer is. In other, in other exciting news this week, uh, you may have seen one of the videos I did was a talk with Pierre Gustafson. Uh, we may do some more of that. And uh, I've had some conversations with a, one or two other YouTubers there's a possibility that I may do some more of that. You know, it was uh, interesting to try. I'm not super thrilled with how the quality of my side of it came out. Um, you know, I just used Skype's record option. So I don't know. You know, I filmed the whole thing on this. I'm wondering if it was going out over my data rather than my network, uh, my Wi-Fi. So I'll have to experiment with that. And the other thing that can be done... You know, I can Skype using this also on my computer. Uh, one trick that worked well for us was, you know how you, you've probably seen those songs on YouTube where they talk about don't film like this, film like this, or turn that phone around. You no, know, because you're supposed to film on YouTube. You want to film in landscape. Now, Instagram, which uh, I've kind of abandoned other than pictures. <laughs> Uh, I was trying to do IGTV for a while, but I uh, just didn't like it. But I may start doing it on this. But anyway, uh, Instagram is going for vertical video. But anyway, we found out if we both did vertical video, we could fit almost all of it onto the screen so we didn't have some of the problems um, that we'd had before about putting things side by side. So uh, that I think that went well. Uh, we both had access to the video so then we could both uh, post uh, on our respective channels so you know it, it seemed to work pretty well so uh, yeah you may see some other youtubers here in the future we'll see um, it's not like I'm going anywhere this summer cuz thanks COVID-19 I uh, stuck in my small town I've been stuck in my small town <laughs> since March um, 
But I am going to go to the hardware store later today and pick up plants for my garden, so I guess that's an outing. All right. I, I, when I can dig outdoors, that'll help me feel a little better about being stuck here. I don't have anything real exciting to report, except that uh, Wednesday is our last day of school. I have already filmed videos for Monday and for Wednesday, so I'll be back on a regular schedule with those. Uh, and um, hopefully you can get back on a regular schedule for pens in use, because I've been falling down on that front just really badly. So uh, I, it's kind of interesting when I think about, I, I teach five different courses. So for each of those courses, I'm live streaming twice a week. So that's 10 live stream. No. Well, okay, because the one class has two sections. So that's 12 live streams a week. And then all of the videos I'm filming for those classes, because lectures, labs, going over labs, going over homework, all of that has to also be filmed for all of those classes. And uh, no, they're not quite to this quality. I don't usually use this camera. I actually mostly use my laptop camera, sometimes use the, well, the camera I held up here for live streaming, um, but or my phone. But it is a lot of video and video editing because I, I want don't want to waste the kids' time. You know, I, I cut down the time on them and everything, cut out those pauses. And, uh, yeah, so I, I've just really been struggling then. Like, oh, yeah, I got a film for my YouTube channel. Also, <laughs> I don't want to. So uh, that's that's been a struggle for me. But uh, now that school's ending, uh, I can get back to doing more of this. Now, I am thinking... Because some of the, the kids actually appreciated being able to watch the labs. I am thinking I may spend some time this summer filming labs. Um, doesn't sound like the most fun thing to do, but uh, then again, I'm here. It's not like I'm going to do much traveling unless the virus subsides a bit. So uh, we'll see. But it, it's been an interesting experience. Uh, with our graduation coming up, we are lucky that this year it's a small class. We only have 26 seniors this year. It'll be the second smallest senior class in the history of the school district. Uh, our smallest one was 21 kids a few years ago. By comparison, last year we graduated, what, 44 or something? So, you know, it's, it's a small class this year. And, and it's a good thing because we have to keep... Uh, they're small enough we can actually hold it in the gym, but... We've got rules on it. We have to have a limited number. We have to limit the number of guests. I forget how many guests they're allowed to bring, um, but it's very limited, and we have to keep that six-foot separation between everybody. So we set up the whole gym floor, so we have 26 seats for the seniors on the gym floor, and then two with each senior for their parents. So that'll be different, having the parents actually sitting with their kid. Uh, but then, you know, they're, of course, close together because... You know their family but uh six foot separation we we've got the whole thing arranged so nobody gets closer than six feet i will be taking photographs because the parents aren't allowed to get up and wander around and take photographs they, if they want to do photographs they got to do it from their seat so i'll be taking photographs but i've got my locked in little area um so it'll be quite different uh one thing i've done i now have a face mask so, uh, is this going to keep me from getting the virus? Oh, heck no. Uh, this is mostly about stopping me from spraying if, if I'm one of those asymptomatic carriers. Because as far as I can see, I don't have it. And I may not. Our county has only had one case, and he's over it now. County to the north had three cases. The county to the east had none. County to the south, which is in South Dakota, has had none. County to the west in Montana, I want to say they've had one or two. Um, but, you know, so this helps me social distance. You know, if I have it, if one of those asymptomatic carriers keeps me from spreading it, um, it's hard to find masks anyway. And, you know, I don't see a need to buy a medical mask to protect myself so much. This is one of those things that if we want society to open up, we should all do our part and help 
prevent the spread of the virus. Now, well, if you come by my house and I'm working out in the garden, guess what I'm not wearing? Uh, I am not worried about spreading it in the outdoors. This is only for when I go into stores. So, uh, and on that note, since I am indoors and it's just me, we'll take it off. And I only get somewhere like once a week or so anyway, so there we go. Um, and, and it is sad to see that some people have turned it political rather than looking at the science. And there's that whole manhood thing like, oh, I'm tough enough to not wear my mole dang mask. Oh, man, god dang it. Well, okay, it's not about how tough you are because that's no protection for you. That's for the people around you that you're not taking care of because you want to prove how tough you are by getting everybody sick if you happen to have it. So, editorial comment. So, uh, yeah, I uh, other news, I look forward to trying out that those slim cartridges because you saw what happened with that escritor. Um, I think I'm going to clean out the escritor and uh, call it good. Uh, and I will say, if you have a bulb, uh, one of those bulbs they use for cleaning pens out, Make sure it's clean. Turns out, I discovered with mine, um, I, I, I went to get some water into it, and you know how you squeeze it, and it blew snot. So, I threw it away. <laughs> I thought, you know, whatever that snot was, because I've never used it for, you know, they're supposed to snorkel out babies' noses. I've never used it for that, but something was growing in it. So, I bought a new one that... Uh, comes apart and it's clear so it can be kept clean so a little safety thing for your pens you don't want mysterious microbes growing in it you know I do have mysterious microbes growing on my kitchen counter I call it my sourdough starter uh, but uh, I don't want them in my pen or in my ink so something to keep in mind and uh, on that note somebody asked if I do a video on cleaning I think I will Again, this summer, I've been slowly, instead of cleaning them out one by one, I've been slowly accumulating pens and just setting them on my kitchen counter. And uh, so I think I'll be doing a cleaning video, an, an updated one, sometime after school's out and I have more free time. So uh, I think I'll leave you there. Uh, I was going to put out a driving video for today. It was supposed to come out this morning, uh, the 17th. And I failed because I put the wrong date when I scheduled it on YouTube. It came out last week. And I was going to premiere it. I was going to be there with the viewers and join in the chat and everything. Well, that didn't happen because guess who didn't show up to the chat because he thought the video was this week. And uh, so I was surprised that Sunday morning when I found all these comments about the video. And I was just, no! So... It was about my time in Turtle Lake, a town I lived in for three years and no longer live there. Um, oh, more personal video. I'll be back. I'm going to do more of that trip. I've got uh, probably two more legs to it because I'm headed to Minot. So I'll probably do somewhere close to Velva. Uh, that leg is about 40 miles north of Turtle Lake. And then I'll probably do another one from Velva over to Minot. And then... Uh, the return trip, I kind of failed to record part of it, but it was boring anyway, because it was uh, the Minot to Bismarck on Highway 83 is a four-lane highway, not an interstate, but a four-lane, and it is boring. But uh, it does get quite interesting after Bismarck, so uh, I do look forward to sharing that leg of the trip. I don't know if there's any road trips this summer. Like, like I said, it's going to kind of depend on what happens with the virus and numbers. Um, living where I do, you can't always trust that your state is necessarily following scientific recommendations. Is that a good way to put it? Or if they're following more political recommendations. So one of those things I have to decide for myself because of the type of area I live. So anyway, on that depressing note, I will leave you. I want to thank you for watching. And if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, um, I would invite, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. Heck, you'll find out what the mystery pen is tomorrow if you subscribe. Otherwise, you'll have to find me again. And um, I'd invite you to leave a comment down below, maybe 
Well, we're going to talk about your favorite retractable pen on Monday, so maybe uh, do you have travel plans this summer? That's a big question for I have. Or uh, what are your feelings on sparkly inks? So let us know down in the comments. So uh, thank you for watching. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.